Hey all, so uh, this is uh, Scalability Part 2 and today I want to continue to discuss the topic of uh, scalability and doing this by asking the right uh, questions. So the first question we are going to ask is uh, whether it is possible to bake in scalability uh, into a startup. Now, even a better question would be that if you are already a startup, whether you want to bake a scalability in, because uh, if you will do that, then obviously this would have uh, implications on uh, how fast you can uh, move on with your uh, software uh, development. So the answer to that, I think, at least in my mind, is uh, very simple. And it is that uh, first you should be aware of uh, what scalability means. And this is what we are going to discuss in these uh, episodes. And once you are aware of it, then you should not block. I mean, you should uh, design your uh, software uh, you don't have to implement scalability from uh, zero from for a f for a little fast growing if you don't have really too many customers i mean if you have two customers 10 customers 100 you still even many more right you still don't need uh, the scalability in your tool set however what you need to know is that what is better doing is that um, is that you you what you bake in is not the solution is is that when you it comes the time that you need to change your architecture that you you won't need to recreate everything from scratch so there is this other possibility maybe that you know that when the times the time will come you will be able to recreate everything so in this case this is okay but you don't really know that and if you don't really know that then the the thing is that with very little effort you can uh, avoid doing this revolution and this recreation or rewrite of the whole code base and how can you do that you can do it with simple steps for for example if you have a database, you can always abuse the database or, or utilize it to the end. You can use every little uh, uh, non-standard SQL, if it's a relational database, every little non-standard query into this database and just use it all over the code base and then when times come you have and you need to you understand you want to change the database mainly because it costs too much money and we want to move to an open source a solution then you find out that you need to rewrite many of your queries and maybe it impacts all of your uh, all of your software but if you wrote your uh, software in a way that when you access the database you don't you less care which database you access you less care whether it's a, even a NoSQL or relational database you just do get into the database the get by key and set by key and maybe you do some searches and when you have some specific queries then uh, you move them to the side to specific uh, files when later you can take those specific files even you you can call it by simple by specific names or, or so, so that later on when you move on to a different kind of database or when you change your architecture and you cannot do these complex uh, searches on your database and you, you need to change somehow the way you do searches maybe you now have sharding we'll talk about this concept in the future so so that in the future it will be much easier to access the, data, the, the database. So if you are using MySQL, then then first I, I will recommend you, for example, right, uh, to use another layer of abstraction. Now, when we say another layer of abstraction, you might think, oh, this is going to take me too much time to create this layer. But but no, it just means another class or a, or a, what. 
whatever that whenever you call the database you first call it and it chooses the implementation and instantiates it for you or if you have a different way now we are also not fond of over engineering so you should uh, be uh, very careful not to over engineer your solution so we are talking about very simple things I didn't really mention a map that loads the type of the database from a configuration and this configuration is injected and stuff like this all I said is that when you call your first database you go through another function which is a general one and it calls your uh, database this is the, the right amount of, of engineering and if you feel you need if you really feel you need more engineering then you can move it to a configuration file but right now when you're early on or you're on your uh, startup then you have a single database so don't over uh, engineer it and um, so so the, there is this this balance that you always need to take care of of over engineering that will cause you also to slow down and the under engineering that will cause you very bad implications even in the future if you get uh, too much uh, specific in your uh, in your uh, solution and this question is uh, also a very uh, major one when we uh, discuss the whole topic of uh, of uh, scalability is how much engineering should you put into your, your solution or how maybe how much over engineering <coughs> should you put into your solution so that in future when you need to do this uh, these uh, refactors when you need to do these changes uh, when you need to grow high then it will from one hand be easy and from the other hand be easy for your current software developers to develop your code and be happy with it and not mess uh, all day with over-engineered code so the answer to that is is, um, is a little of bit of, of art the, I mean there is not no specific solution but but the main guideline is first that uh, you need to, to to engineer your code first so that it will be clear and uh, clean and those are other aspects but they are related because many times a uh, non-clean code uh, means over engineered code so it should be a uh, first clean and 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 by clean we don't mean too many abstractions uh, it means um, it means in general that that you should always try to read your code and understand from the user perspective whether it is clean and clear for the reader of the code and you should apply uh, different uh, use cases such as ask yourself okay what if I need to change the database okay uh, will I need to refactor uh, the whole thing and again if you understand that you need to refactor the whole thing this is this is not really a good point but if you understand that you have a set of queries or, or a set of procedures that reside on the side or on some specific place that only them you need to take and change then this is a, a good point now if you rely on the architecture of your database let's say for a replication or some kind of a sharding then uh, it's okay it's uh, great uh, however the recommendation is to utilize uh, the minimal set of features which you can from your database which will satisfy you I mean it's okay to use feature from uh, various databases migration from one kind of database to another will uh, never be easy uh, however sometimes you need to note that uh, databases try to push you and vendors try to push you into utilizing uh, features which you can you which you don't necessarily uh, need and which you can with very little overhead have a simple uh, implementation so over designing in this way and over using and abusing the features of a database can sometimes harm you um, 
uh, this is very delicate and it's not correct for all cases but in most cases I can see that uh, you can utilize the database in your favor and uh, the database bows to you and not you and your architecture is bowing to the database you should utilize it and not be abused by it and uh, with that we uh, end uh, this uh, episode and I hope you enjoy it and see you next time thank you for listening